That's right. Here we are again, interrupting this current corona cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is BTW RLM365. Remember, we got that new species of coronavirus, the common cold, the deadly coronavirus bogus, the rogue common cold. It's all over us, folks. Don't forget it. Cricket Corona a Nation. Welcome, inmates. I don't know what else to say here, folks. We've got it in our hands to fix this. It's so obvious what's going on that uh, no one's really doing anything. It's pretty fascinating to me. I come here every week to explain how you go about doing things and uh, start the process. Get Jump in. All the rights are on your side. It's the ty tyrants that are getting away with it because you don't. That should be an, a simple a simple methodology pretty quickly right there, but we don't seem to do much. So I, I know I just get, I start thinking about this, and all the week I have a ton of things to think about. Come here with a thought in my mind, and I start saying that, and I said, I have no more words. If everybody would just jump in where they are irritated at least, if not completely violated, of the absurdity of what's going down, we would start to push back on this and actually, with a bigger insight, a more comprehensive insight, remove this threat from coming down on us because it's not going away. Again, it depends on which part you look at. It will depend on how we would address any of the potential threat levels. So it's easy to talk about. It's easy to complain. It's easy to just throw your hands up and say, what do I do? But it's it's not that hard to resolve if you just start doing something, and that's more than just complaining. And I said you start with making a record. And I really do think, I keep thinking about it every time I say that record and what happened in the mass communication, the mass, com mass community that got affected and responded over there in Virginia. That really was the model. That was the example that we can start to use. Everybody can use that, and it was a real simple uh, example. I was going to say form, but that's one of the questions coming up here. And I appreciate the question on the Internet. And thank you for communicating it to me, Jules. The what's people want to know what someone wants to know about forms and things. Well, the there really isn't a form. We can't do this by forms. I learned this a long time ago. In fact, I started to see a long time ago that people that came up and started to explain how their forms and this is what you do and here's the book to follow. When you really looked at those things, I told you you have to. I learned real early on somehow you have to make a chain of title to your evidence. And if there's any weak link or a missing link, you have to disregard the following. You may try to look for the link, but you don't want to go down the, you don't want to try to tie, tie off something to the broken chain. It was just like property title. So uh, back in the 90s, uh, I started seeing people saying this is the answer, this and that. We got all kinds of books come out about how to, how to avoid this tyranny. In fact, you look at deeply and they weren't, the links in them were all broken. They weren't connected too, uh, too well, and that gave me the heads up. And so what I found out is you start making forms, and it worked. It reflected itself quickly in, uh, in administrative r r law, so-called law, the administrative procedures. You don't want to file a petition. You don't want to file a form. You don't want to file a card of complaint. It's dealt with as one, not as, as your independent thought. And uh, and the fact is they do have to deal with that, so it's not an unrestrained uh, authority. But the question was posed by Infinity Split Da four or five six. And I say I only if you identify yourself publicly, I'll go ahead and identify you. And it's uh, I don't know about what to say more, uh, not to call you out or not, not even to not answer. I just I don't even know what the what people think when I call this out. It's not meant to be anything more than to identify your question particularly. And this affects, I think, all everybody, and it kind of looks... I try to use this also as a gauge. I, I'm not sure how long uh, you've been listening, but I've, I've touched the question here over time. Um, and the question is, does Hal Anthony have a site or blog where he can, he act, can actually shows you some of the instruments he oft talks about, like applying records in a legal sense, or making a record to accord with the U.S. Code to defend from unconstitutional martial law. I'm following what he's saying mostly, but could use some examples to look at. Very relevant show, as always. Thank you, Infinity, for the acknowledgement. 
And so I don't know how long you've been listening, but over time I've explained a bit of this condition. So it's, I guess it's important to re, re, retouch on this. There, as I said, there's no forms really. The form is really what you follow in the black and white, the law, those codes that you referred to. When I talk, in the, if you've listened to me long enough or anybody who has, I talk about the elements of extortion or coercion. I'm not dictating what the elements are. You've got to go to your state's law or the federal if it's available, uh, uh, based on jurisdiction. And you, that's essentially the guideline to the form you'll use, the subject matter elements that you need to put in. I did it recently with the senseless workers, the census and making a, making a, a, a notice if you don't want to participate. What I did is I referred back to 2010's reference in a last broadcast here recently, and I made a statement and a discussion at that. Inside what I said was not only the, the situation that you're up against, but also the form, if you will, the, in, my, in what I told you. All of you, not just infinity. The, that I went back through, because I couldn't remember what I said, and I knew I touched it, and it's, it's again 10 year old information. I went back through my own broadcast and pulled from the information I was saying based on the point the point by point um, requirements I pulled out from my my own broadcast my my notice that I'm going to uh, print it out now and using and again it can't be a form because if you start putting in form they start to the government starts to respond to that you have to build from what I told you based on where why I told it to you it wasn't my opinion I read it from the documents that I told you in that, uh, I exposed to you or anybody who listened in that broadcast, and then I went to the code and I found out what they say there, and I compiled in a state, a relatively broad statement, brought enough different points, elements that you had to bring if you didn't want to participate. In other words, the very first one was they agreed in their own paperwork back in the 2010 disclosure through a FOIA that if you didn't if you said you didn't want to cooperate that was pretty much the end of it and then it gave us some inclination on what how they were going to interpret it which was to say they could get the information otherwise and so i listed those and i put those in a statement so the form was dictated by the requirements of the in this case the one that's the officials is going to come against you the, against you because you don't you want to you know that they're saying the threat was they would arrest you and so you have to come up with that meet that with an objection that's respected by the other side and the way you do that you don't make that up as uh working with some people and making their notes we're fine you can it's pretty nice actually to have people that are re doing the study we can have a dialogue on what's necessary what you hold back and what you how you set up in case they come after you that's not a form because all this is dealt with on a case by case subject matter by subject matter basis and so a lot of people want to see forms and they want to see the example. An example is always nice. I tell, um, I speak to you what those are. Now, to get to the point about are there other documents and where, there's not many. And I've said before on, on prior broadcasts why the Jefferson Mining District has decided not to make those public. There's got a couple of problems. One is they're not finalized. And so they lead people, if they're not studying in, in the moment, I mean, in the, in the condition, they're not understanding that a paper that's filed may be in the middle of a process that has no ultimate meaning, if you will. It just sits there. It, it has its purpose in that it's oppress, opposing, what typically opposing, what an agency is trying to do because it, typically they tend to seem to run down your rights lately in the last two, a couple decades. So we don't produce those, and we... And so many many things, because of the way they're answered, the agencies won't follow through. So we don't have many documents. There is one that you go to Jefferson Money District on the coordination side of the page on the right side near the top, uh, right near the top link of where the coordination links are. If you go there, there's one uh, comment we made to a state in an administrative proceeding. And you can see what it ta uh, what the form, if you need one, if you, example, more example than the form, of what a, communi a communication, administrative communication might look like. Again, it's just subject matter, it's the text, you bring out everything that it's relevant, and then you have your discussion. In that case, that's a four-page document, so it's, you know, we didn't go, again, you don't go through all the rights, you go through, and you have to look at these things very particularly. So the fo the example is really not even explaining what you why you have to do what you have to do. 
it speaks in the context of what our, as a as a dist, mining district was response to an administrative in this case an imposition. It was also violative of our lawsuit in 2013, which we also include in there. You'll see that, and for that, it might that lawsuit may be on the internet. They, they pull it off and they put it on, it, and sometimes I find it, sometimes I don't. Now they've shoved it over into Pacer. I don't have Pacer, uh, which is a governmental um, registration for getting lawsuits. They shoved it over there, so I, I don't get it uh, get to see it. But if you can get access, the Jefferson Mining District lawsuit was Je- Jefferson Mining District versus Kitzhopper. It was in 2013. But you have to be studied in, in what we were doing in order to understand what was being said there. And in that regard, we had, we moved to enjoin the go- the state government from imposing what we also found was implementation of provisions of sustainable development through climate change and the use of the equity injunction the injunction remedy was one to touch everybody that comes in everybody that comes in to support or aid and abet what we identified as the of harm that was violative of whatever it could be constitutional rights it could be statutory rights grant rights obligations and duties relationships of the government to grantees which in this case was a mining a mining condition uh, for property, and there those are pretty absolute. And that ties back to your patent. So we use this long arm, if you will, long arm approach through the equity remedy to actually go back through the chain of of funding, the leverage funding that you've heard about, to attach the, uh, against the and be able to move against the EPA itself, which happens to be a complete pillar promotion of what you would hear is Agenda 21, Sustainable Development, and maybe even Agenda 2030. So, again, the evidence is there, the example is there, but no, that's not a form. You won't ever follow that. What you will do is you'll see the points within it which correlate outside the paper, the document, out into the law, and then you got to know, you have to know, essentially what we were talking about, why this thing that you see as Sustainable Development is making war on the laws of the United States relative to property rights in particular. And and so there's a whole thing behind this. It, once you get once you get the sight of it, once you see it, it, it's really not that complicated. It really boils down to do you really understand what property is? And so there's an evidence there of what to, a paperwork that you could get if you can get a hold of it. Um, there is the writings on the Jefferson Mining District, some of which are examples of administrative comments through a coordination process, or the or in some regards where they didn't have one, so you get to argue. The I want to move on to the martial law. That's not, as I've said before, that's not something typically you'll ever discuss. There's a couple of different types of information that we'll have. Stuff that we look at, the, the codes that give us the standard from which we'll respond, that get the specificity within administrative context. The other side may be the law and how it works, or it's not working, it's not being enforced. And then you have another thing where I've said you have to know your battlefield. And if we weren't in one, I probably wouldn't talk about this. But it's not something that you're going to write in a form. It's not something in an example. You'll see in an example. It's how you deal with whom you're dealing with. It sets up how you look at what you're looking at to do. Why it, That informed me when we did our lawsuit in 2013, when we wrote that complaint, why we chose the equity response they defaulted that which in law in the rules if you go to the federal rules i think it's around 55 to 60 or so you'll see how a default on an on an equitable an equity action is supposed to work uh, that it didn't also informs us how cro- corrupt not by because my, my opinion it's corrupt but the judicial system isn't justice but the point about the equity case a default stands in law it's not and it's not an opinion and so when you're in a whole government that is violating what it promised, we have a different problem. So, you know, and then watching this coronavirus nonsense go down is, is just a, another element to explain that to people. If they would just recognize that's what it is, realize they're truly, we're truly under attack. Really, this is because your houses aren't, I told you, you don't realize how your your houses are being destroyed, how your neighborhoods are destroyed, how your towns are destroyed by this cancer that's already inside. They've now gone to to implement a more, more of it in a more solid way. And I just, again, I hear crickets. I hear people just complaining. And what do you do? Well, you start to make the record. 
you start to do what we started to see in Virginia. Where do you send it? Well, you got to do a little bit of research, and you go after, really, the people who are signing those orders. That's where you start it. Again, folks, where there is no test, what's the base or demonstrable exigence? What's the basis for what they're doing? I'm astounded we have nobody moving this forward. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to me. But uh, anyway, so to answer, I hope that answers more of, most of your questions. Uh, the martial law thing is an understanding of the condition you're in. I put it this way. If you, for those of you that done the, the gold fringe flag thing, okay, great. That's look at that. That's a telling you something, or not, and see it's all subject matter condition. So it depends. But if you realize that that's a martial court, I, what I call the West, the Spaghetti Western False Front, that you'll never know is actually martial law. When you understand that's what you're walking into, and it's not the only thing you're walking into with that with that symbol. There's a certain thing that should trigger in your mind of how, how they're going to deal with you or not. And what you have to your aid, a remedy to against that silent oppression. Instead of claiming, oh, it's admiralty, I've challenged everybody. Understand what your avoidances are in an admiralty court. Well, they're slim, but they're there. And in particular, we can bring them up when we understand what law of land is, the real law of the land itself. And the or grant relationships that forms the condition that can be held against even an admiralty authority, unless they've come in uh, aggression not not under the law, and that's a whole different thing. But that's a thing. Martial law stuff. You don't argue you're in martial law. They don't care. They just realize they got someone who sees. It's like they live. You have the glasses. They'll treat. They'll deal with you. If you don't mention all that, and you just know that's what you're in, and you present yourself in certain ways within the context of what they're going to agree to, because that's just a self-evident proof you're in an occupied territory. You're not free. You can't just come in and say your piece and that be it. No, no, they've got you all locked up into special formality. I don't like it, but that's what it is. And so you enter in, if you well, you don't really enter in. You know, if you hear me, it's avoidance. It's always avoidance. And you challenge on the things that even the admiral can't touch if you go to the military side. But you have to have the awareness that you're in a, under martial law, and not that because I've said it or you believe it, but you have to have the chain of links and title back to the laws that form your the foundation for your understanding. Once you do that, there's nobody that can rip this from your mind. There's nobody that can rip this from my mind, folks. I know exactly how I got to where from the beginning to the end, about why we sit here and why I can say martial law and why I can see it so quickly. We're already there. And how everyone else is either duped or stupid or, 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 or shills to try and get you to convince and focalize, focalize your folk, make, mono, make your focus mon, monopic here, to get it right down to some one little point, you, get everybody to buy into it, and that's the end of it when that's not even close to the end of it. 5G causes coronavirus. Everyone jumps on it, but no one understands the dynamic and says, oh, they, then they get shut down and they got they think that's a big conspiracy. When the, It isn't even about all that at all. But they've got you trapped. And so, back to, there's not that many forms that we produce. Uh, not You won't find many on the Jefferson Mining District. You won't hear me present any. Uh, you will hear me speak them. You will hear me speak of examples of things, uh, possibilities and probabilities of dynamics and jurisdictions and authorities that are working that most people just don't see but complain about. And so a lot of people get disappointed about that. What I'm telling you is it takes some work here. Once you you invest in yourself the work it needs, and you see the dynamic, you see the they live condition, whether or not you run out of bubble gum or not, I don't know. I try to advocate against the alternative, but you at least bring some bubble gum. <laughs> You've got something to chew on here. And hopefully you're doing it in a place that's not, there's no jeopardy. I advocate, always consider, after looking at this for quite a long time, there's no, there's a lot of, a lot of things we can do without any jeopardy. Even right now when we're locked down. In fact, I've told you that, I've given you the example of where you, where you go. Uh, again, so get back to the, to the thing about forms. There really are no forms. The forms are the statute. As I was, and I won't say too much more, but as somebody who I was discussing in an email characterized this, the thing that they were needed to constrain their knowledge, and which was fairly extensive, 
was into the cookie cutter that the government agent would use. And I thought that was, for that discussion, very relevant. And I think I can extend it to here. You're dealing with people in the official capacity that really only have a cookie cutter that they can respond. You just call it boilerplate for lawyers. You can't really use boilerplates either. But the cookie cutter is the only view that the government official can see. What I show you is if you answer within that, some of that, there's no answer for it. You find the stuff outside the cookie cutter. Now, that's just your state and condition, your status relevant to the being inside the cookie cutter. You speak from inside the cookie cutter, but what you speak to in the cookie cutter shows that the that their authority doesn't exist outwardly. You're never really talking more than that in some regard. And so I hope that's... So the, the example, there isn't one in a way because you have to approach each, each case on a case-by-case basis. That's a good thing and that's a bad thing. Again, the double-edged sword. But you need to speak to someone in their language when that foreigner comes to try and impose upon you. Even though it doesn't seem like the people in the United States are all foreigners, their government is foreign to the people. And you see, relative to actual property rights, or what we would say now, if I can reference the Virginia Constitution, the posterity, the rights of the posterity, you'll see very carefully, clearly when you read that, are prior and distinct from the established government. And I explain how to take that as your form in, res- in what you're going to say. The word you use their cookie cutter words to then bring in your power as someone that it doesn't apply to in the way they're applying it. And so I went a lot longer in explaining. I hope that was some clarity. Don't be again the other. I guess I didn't touch too much. I found out early, early on, creating forms for people creates a complacency like that's the answer. And I keep telling you, there's no silver bullets. It's literally on the case by case basis, the, the negative side of the case by case basis. You have to look at each thing that you're involved in, go right to the subject matter authority that the cookie cutter official is going to be looking through, and you meet that, but you meet it in such a way that shows you're not inside that, or that the statuses have not created a point that they can touch it, or they've exceeded, they're trying to reach out outside of the, the cookie cutter frame, if you will. They're just not where you are. And, and so that brings up a whole lot of other things that I talk about, but I do this over the broadcast. Why? Because there's a, it's like handing a, if I give forms, everyone thinks, oh, that sounds like it's great. And then they go use the form and they think it's a silver bullet. It's like handing a guy, a uh, gal, uh, a loaded gun and they don't understand it. They shoot themselves. Once you understand what the subject matter is you're dealing with, you actually don't need what I've been telling you. But there's a society out there that apparently doesn't know the basics. It's fascinating. We can't, I can't even get to the point where I discuss with people that know the basics how that there's things beyond that that we have to deal with yet. And, and this is to my chagrin. Uh, and this is kind of like the same thing with the Jefferson Mining District. Pull a district together to give empower all the miners that would enter into the district. And they when they found out there was a little bit of work involved, they all walked away, which was the microcosm of the society. That's the truth. i got to deal with that. And we have been. It's a lonely place. I don't know what to say about that. But it doesn't mean that each one of us doesn't have the rights that we expect or can attain. And we don't have to engage so much. We just we have to learn how to avoid if you learn the distance between avoiding and evading. It's not hard concepts. It's just a matter of looking at everything in a particular way. The form is given to us in what the oppressor will impose upon us in the case that I'm taking when I mention things like you know, they impose them some requirement, which you find out it was a, a right, it was unwarranted, they didn't have title to that, or they didn't have a right to it, and then they still violate you in it, that's, that's a felony. So I didn't make up what the list of that, what constitutes the felony. In the felony for the extortion I talked about against property, it's uh, four or five elements, depending on if there's a third party involved. I don't make that up, and that's in a simple sentence. As I said, when you read your, when you read your code, and to the mo- and I've read some of these things. To the most part, they're pretty interestingly accurate about what constitutes a thing. That you don't make that up. You just fill the blanks, comma after comma, in a sentence. In this particular, the extortion statute. You know, an official. That's one one point. You identify the official. Comes unwarranted. You identify they had no warrant. Without title. You 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 produce that you have the only title. To interfere with a property 
and you show what the interference was. That's the only thing you're going to state. That's the form. What you state, I can't even give an example because it's a hypothetical position, but not to the form. Okay, so, and if you go to the right, uh, the rights to the property that are uh, messed up or interfered with, infringed, whatever you decide that it is, is wrong, you do the same thing, but it's coercion. Same, but you lay out the elements. An official, named, unwarranted, have take away their authority, uh, interfered with a property, a right within a property, or a, pro a right, independent, uh, had no right to do that. That's really just, that's the form that you use. It's not a piece of paper you're looking for. You create the form, essentially, by complying with the requirements that the a government official or the society at large looking at the objective basis that the black and white provides everybody, is really the important point about that, can see. Whether or not a criminal in the government is going to stop, that's a whole different question. That's where I say we need the mass of people we need to have to understand how people really understand. This is not a question. I don't need to find out what what the the what Bill Gates did in a, in a prior life. I mean, and I find interesting stories popping out. It's not what I remember <laughs> what he was. At any rate, doesn't matter. I don't have to know that. I just have to know that he comes without warrant to interfere with me, or someone relies on his stuff to come without warrant to interfere with me. Uh, that they are taking license without authority to interfere with me. That the suspending of the rights, there's nothing nowhere in the world that that I even know, unless you a king, a king over land and with people as property, they could determinate any right, so called. And yeah, I look across the nation, and and we're doing the memification of the coronavirus. It's fascinating, common cold, common cold, and here we go. But uh, so me, I hope that answers the question. I hope I clarified a little bit of that. You really have to settle down and look at what's required. And yes, there's a requirement. If we were free, that wouldn't be there. So that's the self-evident proof you're in lockdown even before they actually put you, shoved you down to your house. So you thought you thought being out and about on the streets freely was you being free. And I identified for you back in 2005. I identified. It just didn't matter. It just mattered how what they agreed with at the time would be how free you actually were. Otherwise, they could shove you back into your pod or they can shove you back into isolation relative to jail. That was how it worked. And if I was a good little boy or girl, they would let me walk around outside the jail. And then I realized when I saw that, your house was your jail, but no one understood that. Where did I come up with that? But the prior condition study that showed me I lived in an occupied country. How? You have to build the chain of evidence to show that the Civil War didn't end, and then you can come up with all the reasons and the little laws here and there that explain that. Do I then promote that more than to tell you you live in a, play, in a condition you need to address, but quietly you need to answer it as a silent condition that you respond to and not mention it? You have to understand what I've been saying so you see that, and you'll understand why you respond at least until I find another way or someone has another insight, I respond the way I do. When I'm telling you about martial law and I can show it to you, it's because I've done the study to be able to show it to you. It's not a question to me. Whether anybody else understands that or whether the tyrant occupier would even agree to that is a total different question, but we don't make it a sub subject for discussion. We, we, you and I, just sit back and say, okay, that's the condition. How am I going to go through that minefield? And that's what you plot. You plot and plan that against that op oppressor. And they have no rights at all. And when you start to see that, and you actually settle in the presumption of innocence beyond presumption even, you're innocent. Their presumption can't even fit on you, but they can't move until they can show something. It should lift a whole lot, and it should start bringing clarity as to what I've been saying about the form is what the occupier is required to do on an objective basis that I know now and I've been knowing for a long time, but more since Virginia was, a, I was able to show you all, if you've understood it or believed it or not, how a mass, the mass of community is what goes can go against the established government. Now, I don't know of a bigger mass of community we could have but this coronavirus. And I told you I'm a little bit excited if we would just stop being 
adult. I mean, I don't know what else to say about us. It's pretty pathetic. But at any rate, hope that goes. I hope that answered the question. Long way to go. Um, anyway. I, I discuss things over time. I don't give you something to go make a form to try and give it to other people to say this is the silver bullet because they won't work anyway and they don't work. The example is what I'm telling you is the example. You have to settle down and think about do the steps I'm telling you, work out how that is for you, and then and then you move through that. Every document, if I was ever to produce, you would find that they were never the same, none of them. Yet, what we're responding to has an ordered form. It's dictated to us. And if you don't respond to that, you won't be listened to. It's really simple. But uh, moving on now. So, the information I give over time, I've been uh, pretty confirmed here over a long time. I don't know what else to say about that. People who listen to me and thought about what I've done and practiced what I've said, I think they understand that, and that's cool. That's great. Uh, there's nothing on that for me, in a way, because we were all, as a society, we should have all been way beyond, way beyond all that. This shouldn't even be happening here. I mean, this would have been an embarrassment to, to officials who even thought about it, but this is how far beyond we are. But someone's gotten the news here real quick. I'm just going to touch a lot of stuff quickly, as I usually do. Can't get in-depth. I hope you all read some of this stuff and start putting it together for yourself. Ofcom urgently probes Ike. That must be an ouch. Oh, Ike TV interview on virus. So, a UK regulation, regulatory authority jumped on Dave, uh, David Icke, who, who made a comments on a um, London Real broadcast, although I don't, don't know exactly their rules and laws and that they were actually a broadcaster. However, it went on the internet. Uh, David, uh, this, this regulatory authority uh, had uh, took offense to the idea that there was a possible connection statement promotion of 5G causing coronavirus, and uh, we might get to some of that today. And this is where you really have to start to be really smart, uh, intelligent, not smart, but no, uh, smart, intelligent. See how easy that is? I just found out there's smart hard drive information. I wondered about that, the way they collect information that way. But anyway, you have to be intelligent about how you approach this. And it may be that Ike was very intelligent, because the first reports I've had is because he didn't actually say that 5G caused coronavirus, they may not be able to get them. And this was an object lesson for us on how you these words become very important. On, and lawyers use this all the time. But how this is now in our sphere to have to do. Uh, what I am more focused on is that this uh, this video, these, there was two, two interviews. In fact, I referred to one last week that he, uh, David Icke, is talking about. And I'll it's getting millions and millions of views because of the censorship it's giving even more. What I was also listening to, though, within it, I'm listening for more information if there's anything new. And for me, I felt fairly confirmed in what I've been telling you. I didn't put this, the, there's no information that I heard that he mentioned that you haven't heard had you been listening behind the woodshed. The difference and distinctions were a couple, which is, Again, where I look at what is going on. One is, you didn't get it all last week. You would have gotten a bulk of that, a bulk of it, and documents. Weeks and even months ago, from behind the woodshed. And the re- and I'm not, okay, so part of the thing is, if he gets censored, I don't know why you all, 7 million people, aren't listening to promote what I've been saying. That everyone would have had this information before. You would have been telling David Icke, yeah, we know that. Here's the documents, which he doesn't refer to. He refers to people, uh, so-called authorita, in, that are doctors and experts and all this other stuff. In fact, the government has given the, the proof that he could have read to everybody uh, to show exactly the scam that's going on. I'm talking about strictly about this so-called common cold that's become a, a deadly killer. and all, I mean, all the stuff that goes around it. Now, what not to diminish what David Icke said, I did want you to go see his video last week. He does package it up in a two and a half hour broadcast. What I told you extends out over months and weeks, the weeks I can come to talk about this stuff. What I want you to understand here and how I deal with this and not opposed really more uh, to David Icke's presentation is to listen very carefully. He ab- He avoids... My thought it's an evasion, but it's an avoid. I'll just leave it the nice side. 
he avoids to offer a, quote, solution, an answer to what y'all might do. And I'm, I'm going to, you got to look, listen very, care, very carefully. For as much as I admire the last few minutes of his statements to y'all, I think I read some of them off to you last week. He doesn't offer you even a suggestion of what you might consider to do, let alone, I mean, actually put some nuts and bolts down. He doesn't have the documentation he should have had. I say this for anybody that wants to take this bull by the horns, or this amoeba by its single cell and squeeze it. Uh, he doesn't really address what you're going to do about it. He leaves it on you. And if you are someone who just looking for forms and examples and don't have a better thought in your brain, we're not going anywhere further with this. You still have your aspirations. You still have your 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 dismay about how it can be here and your disgruntlement, but it won't move farther. And so in two and a half hours, David Icke is now under the gun. Millions and millions of people now see him, but you've gotten the same information before he put it together. He had benefit of a lot of people's work, and he synthesized it in a nice way, which I think you need to listen to. But if you want to hear what to do, that really is not the place to go. If you wanted the documents to prove yourself, you're not going to get it from them. You're actually not going to get it from me. I just got it from the government. Why? The cookie cutter, the myopic view is speaking through that. Gives you everything you need to know. And then I want to also point out something. It's, again, two and a half hours of information synthesizes and distills down to one four-word phrase. There is no test. Now, when there is no test, what is the solution, if I can use, I hate using that word, but what's the answer? What's the remedy to there is no test, folks? And you have the proof from the oppressor, the occupier, the gangster that's taking you down, that has you locked in your house in this free society. When there is no test, we're back to what I said, where's the demonstrable exigence for any of this authority? And why are you silent to that? He doesn't offer that observation. And this is where I want to point to people who are paying attention. We got information. What are you going to do with it? The, the, the social networking is completely about passing information mindlessly about. No one seems to grab it up and go utilize it anywhere. Oh, it builds up your disgruntlement and your dis, you know your complaints. But... I look at these things, when I found the two governmental documents that prove that the government doesn't matter about Fauci, it doesn't matter about Trump, it doesn't matter about anything other than they have no test. There's, not, there's nothing they can test the existence for, folks. And that's not clear enough that even he would tell you that there's something to do. And, okay, so... Big awareness coming down. The regulators don't like it. What they are particularly not liking is the 5G assertion of starting the coronavirus, which I may get to in a bit, but there's another thing you get to do there. And If I get there, I'll try to get there now. I have to run real fast to get there. Gary L. presented a thing from the Federal Register. You want to start talking about 5G? Forget about it causing coronavirus. Talk about what has the agency has failed, but I'll get there in a bit. So when you talk about stuff openly, you put it in the comp compact, you see the dynamic against you, that's the war that you're in when you go to look out into what you're going to do and how to defeat that thing. If you listen inside to what uh, David Icke said, apparently uh, the Ofcom group uh, that I understand now, he used words they couldn't actually pin a 5G coronavirus connection to. That may have saved him. That's the kind of intelligence that you bring forward when you're doing this. Don't become mentally lazy on this or tactically weak. You actually can be empowered by a lot of this thing. What well, the outcome of this, I don't know. What I do know is one outcome I do know that's not going to happen is that no one was given a direction to begin their journey in how to address this. And that's going to kill us. That kills us every time. Because the gangsters in power will wield that power when there are no, no, op no opposition to it. Crickets in the house is not going to do it. 
thinking that you're getting away with not being underneath a, a quarantine is not going to give. I mean, this is the, the thing I see. I don't. There's nobody I know that's being constrained by this thing. It doesn't mean that the system isn't setting up the infrastructure to make it permanent. As we see examples of people like getting on buses and stuff and getting yanked off, no six-foot rule there. Don't hand the guy a mask just because they say they claim there's a mask. The guy doesn't say there is no test. If there is no test, what's the mask for, folks? If there is no test, what's the authority standing there beating, trying to make me a chicken wings for? No one says this. No one in the bus came to his aid. If there is no test, there's no COVID. There's nothing. There's nothing. It's someone's opinion. Is someone's opinion sufficient to su interfere, infringe with any substantial right you may have? Any substantial property you may have? And yet I hear nobody responding to that. Mo moving internationally to show the reflection that this is the global kind of thing, these opportunists don't let any crisis go to waste, and they're in fact fabricated. And we never, we never stop them at there is no test. Do you realize if I say there is no test, the two and a half hours that Ike was talking about is not what you talk about in front of somebody? You don't go through all the rationales. You stop the rationale. You stop the discussion. You go to the point that there is no jurisdiction, power, authority, anything, and anybody that's coming against you. Now, what do you do when you're stuck in your house and they got the cops outside and there's a bunch of them? That's where this letter writing stuff or emails and stuff starts to come into bear. And if you could start doing these uh, email trees or whatever, and you all know, lots of you in an area, in a neighborhood, know that you're communicating with a couple of particular uh, officials that are going to enforce this or have made a, an impression that they c thought they could, you start to have the massive community start to bear down on those couple people relative to requiring in the face, there is no test what their actual authority is. Right there, they can't even return to the federal authority. And you start expanding the people who know that there is no test and that what the standard is, they had to be a test to find anything powerful enough to stop anybody's rights and property. And even then, there would have been a question. Can they suspend the Constitution because they have an exigence? Well, if you look at Virginia's Constitution, it says no. It says they have an established authority, not one that's omnipresent and omnipotent. And that's done in two, se uh, two sections of their constitution. It's fascinating how quickly we get to the point there again. Well, anyway, gangsters in the world, we see how it happens. I talked about Netanyahu last week. I'm going to add some more here about you want to talk about your rights being infringed and that we see distinctions between uh, we want to talk about uh, Israel, and we want to talk about religion, and, uh, and then the Zionists and the polit politics. We see it right here. Netanyahu announces full lockdown of Israel ahead of Passover. They're locking down everything. If that was a, actually a religious state, they wouldn't do that. And so we look a little bit deeper, and we uh, uh, my response to that was so much for Zionist respect of religious rights. Why do I say that? I say that because we have a political faction that's overriding someone who has inherent and pre-established rights that are really not supposed to be infringed on what? On something that there is no test. There's no way to point to anything. There is no dialogue around it either. It doesn't matter about ventilators. It doesn't matter about regulators. It doesn't matter about spread. It doesn't matter about deaths. It matters not. There is no test. I've been saying this for weeks and weeks and weeks. In particular, after I found the documents. That, 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 you want to talk about an example in a form? Anybody who's asked that question, there it was. They told us exactly what the authority was through what they've confessed and admitted. That's the best, that's the what you want in the criminal. You want to confess to the crimes. And so, what do you do? You correlate your ideas together in, in one area, you lay down what you see has to be happening, you present your authority to whomever was the one signing the orders and or will fulfill, fulfill it as an, if you do equity side, those that aid and abet the commission of this crime against us. And then you tell others because it does take a little bit more. That's one way to approach it. I've seen another where you go and, and torch the, uh, the, G, the, 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 the 5G towers, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Corona. We're talking about the fraud. 
because that 5G is a total different style of fraud, but it's handled the same way. But you're not going to ultimately win by burning down the infrastructure. You know, what you can do is you're going to call you're going to call the military in on your head in a in a surveillance state, no less. But so much for Zionists, their respective of uh, religious rights. These are political criminals that took advan take advantage at every turn to to undermine everything you thought was a right. But clearly now we see Israel is not a religious state. So I don't know anybody, I won't get into all that. You make of it what you will. But we don't, ha we don't have the reality that functions quick uh, quicker, the foundational reality functioning quicker than the criminals are. Another gangbanger, a who, who, uh, the who, uh, not the rock group or the owl again, director, who director, not a question either. The HWO director warns Trump that there will be more body bags after defunding threat, where, the, where Trump uh, is uh, trying to figure out whether or not he wants to continue to fund uh, the HW, WHO, and even the UN came up to say they're going to be sh shutting down if they don't get some money. You know, good riddance. I've already told you they should just shove the building on over into the wa water right there off, off, side there, uh, uh, off side where it's planted and give them a bunch of paddles and let them push themselves and paddle themselves back across the Atlantic using their, their concrete boat uh, to get back to Europe. We don't need them here. Uh, so I'm already, you already know I'm, I'm on board with that. But this statement out of this who director, when you go look, this guy is not really a medical doctor either. He's got his ties in. Like I told you, they're all cancerous inside this thing that's been imposed upon you. The WHO does have some of an authority, but it's in a guidance authority, which is now run through administrative side. Uh, but he comes back with a threat there'll be more body bags when the Trump said he wasn't going to fund this place. One of the most corrupt organizations. It's really none of his say anyway. But it did bring up another thing. It did bring up another observation. Whether or not you wanted to support Trump in that or not, I don't know. That could be something that you start to move. We do need this UN organization and all of its uh, uh, ancillary tentacles uh, done done away with. But my response to that w was a question, and a couple of questions, uh, really, uh, that I find interesting that the government won't respond. It hasn't at this point yet. That the administration has its own. This administration has its own coronavirus bogus closet skeleton, but is, quote, more body bags, close quote, quote, a bio threat on the life of the president and the, uh, of the United States and his family. Is this admission that who gangsters will cause more death if this gangrene gangbanger doesn't get his extortion money? And that's not a, to make just a statement, oh, let's see if I can be sounding clever. You have to understand, I'm talking about a condition here that in one hand will be, op if you go do it, will be, uh, will be, dealt with, and on another hand here is not, that underpins a big deal of problem for you and I, that the government is still agreeing to, notwithstanding any funding, that it becomes one big syndicate here, contrary to your life, and that syndicate is not established in the Constitution. And I've said we see evidence, if we needed it, that Virginia shows us there's a hierarchy of authority, and the established government's not the authority, ultimately. When people mass together in a common action that's correct within the constraints of that, whatever the, the Constitution in this case for Virginia is, what the one word, maladministration, and you deal with the elements, you find what the element, the form elements are for maladministration, and you present that, you've set, you position yourself as the people to work where, where the three established departments of government did and failed to stop a breach. In this case, clearly because there is no test. Ever, I, don't, I don't know if people appreciate, appreciate this. If given there's no test, there is no discussion that can come out of the mouth of anybody to try and make an argument about that. They'd either produce the test that wasn't what we see today, because that means nothing, there is no test. Or they would have to produce an authority that they have that didn't need the test, which I have. I don't know of any of them. In particular, because they're an established, black and white, created entity on the, called government. 
And so instead of arguing, you find the core failure and you nail just that. You don't have to talk about, I don't need to talk about occupations and martial law and property rights and all that. I'm strictly focused. All that sits in my in my hip pocket if I want it. All I'm focused on, I don't want to make a big story about, like I talk here a lot to try and get people to understand things. When I'm dealing with this, an official like this, all I want to know is where it's clearly shown you have no authority. What do you think your authority is? Otherwise, you need to go to jail or whatever. You need to be gone. I don't expand the conversation. I don't allow, I've learned, folks, I didn't always do this. I don't allow the conversation to get beyond the first point of challenge which flips the burden immediately to the one upon which whom is exercising an authority you've done your job you've called out the you've called out the crime now due process whether they'll give you it or not requires an answer that's in relevant material pertinent and in law and if you don't get that then you've caught them now you and I on our own likely aren't going to get far. However, again, as we saw in, in, in Virginia, if the mass of the community were focused on that, like the heat of a thousand suns, I think it starts to correct itself. And or those mass of people now are not by themselves. And they are, their power becomes one that appears to be, most normally is described as a mob, but in fact, if you do it correctly and make that record I keep telling you about, and you get no answer or wrong, if they even answer wrong, they've admitted at that point, then you're not the mob. Now you become, you come underneath the posterity's power to, to check an excess that was never given to the government. And I think that's a much cleaner way to approach it. If you did nothing more than to show people to challenge everyone, you show me the test before I agree this is anything. It's not even coronavirus, folks. It's There is no test. It's nothing. It's our imagination. I don't even buy into the term much anymore. You know, i got to read it, but I don't buy into the term. That when someone from the, a foreign organization says there's going to be more body bags, i got to take that with a pretty good notice of that. We're in a war. They mean it. All because what? We're not going to pay them their their money? Like, like some gangster in a small business? Are we putting up with that? I'm surprised I haven't heard more about that, that thing. But anyway, it doesn't matter about what I think. Because these global gangbangers have you. They've figured it out. They've figured you won't respond correctly. You've given them plenty of example. I've seen how the example isn't met. Uh, we do our part to try and meet it. Where we can do that, we shut down, it, shut the system down in different parts. But there's not enough of us into all the different subject matters. They're, they're, the chickens are coming home to roost now about all this, like I'm telling you about these modernization acts. It's these guys. It's these people that would threaten that there would be more body bags. I'm sure he's going to say, oh, the way you're doing it is going to cause more death. But there is no test, so how can he know what the cause is going to be? Certainly there's going to be death. There's death all the time. But there is no test. In fact, when we get to the very end, if I ever get there, there's a doctor out of uh, Montana or someplace to tell you that they really just guess on the death certificates. And I'm not, notwithstanding the fact of what the, they're getting paid now, the hospitals are getting paid to put a COVID coronavirus some, uh, surmise on it, but she'll tell you that they even rely on, on the cause of death on re relatives sometimes. They're making this stuff up all everywhere. And these are the evidences I want you to see, not to say, oh, look, at the, the, there's a fraud going on. No, you take that little piece of evidence and you throw it as a subject matter nugget point, bullet point, on a list of things that shows that can, the official who, who purports to wield authority has no place to go to gain uh, a foothold for that authority. And you only put out as many bullet points of those facts to essentially describe in short sentences what the condition that is might be responded to. That's all. You're, you're only putting out enough bullet points in res to this that you need to relative to what their avoidance would be. In other words, if they have, you know it's police power, you go look and do some research about where their excuses would come, and you cover, you, know, you just make, you find the points that would cover whatever excuse that they might have, and you take that those options away. But when there is no test, then you, you don't even have to bring up much of the other, do you? 
I don't think, well, I say, do you? And I expect you to say yes, but you have to know that that's the truth for you, that the, there, when there is no test, you're hearing zero. You're hearing nothing coming out of these people. There's zero to rely upon, folks. There's zero physically to rely on with all this destruction that you see going on. And then you hear this gangbanger in the who, there's going to be more bodies. Pretty interesting threat. And then justification from someone who's, again, aiding and abetting this cause. Like I said, what Greta didn't get done, this coronavirus is doing. Pope Francis, today of all days, Pope Francis, the pandemic could be nad nature's revenge for ignoring climate change. This guy pops back up. If you don't think this is all an integrated type of an attack. Nature's revenge for people ignoring climate change. Climate change is an unproven idea. There is no test. When we do the modeling, you find out there can be no models. That models are not even a test anyway. There is no test. How can this be a revenge? When you realize that nature is nature... We have no expectations, then there is no test. There is no authority. He's not infallible. He is a political creature. He is Netanyahu gangbanging people that have a religious faith they want to believe in. Who happens to be the front for that very same faith that they think that they're being uh, respecting? Palm Face Sunday was, I think, last weekend, wasn't it? These people are right in our face the entire time, and we are blinded by what we're told, and we believe that are insinuated and infiltrated, metastasized in the good things with the bad. This is what alternative dispute resolution is all about telling you. What most people call, would identify limitedly as the, the Hegelian dialectic, Thesis, antithesis, and solution. Whatever the heck. I don't even get into that. It's a whole other process, but that's what people, you know, you focus on that, you miss the process, I guess is the point. Uh, the Pope Francis pandemic could be nature's revenge. There is no test. How could he say that, folks? There is no test. I'm telling you, how fat, if you, if you really appreciate this, there is no test. What are they, what's everyone referring to? What am I? I keep saying that. Do you really understand? It's not me saying that. It's just my, that's a paraphrase of what the CDC has said. That's a paraphrase of what the FDA admits the swab test, the, the diagnostic panel limits are. So how could this guy who's infallible say there's a pandemic on something that there is no test over? How can he then attach nature's revenge? Could be. We believe that too. Isn't he God on earth? Wouldn't he know? Climate change. Wow. Climate changes all the time. That's nature's revenge. Thank you very much. And so, I, you know, we can go on. I mean, there's people that speak a little bit, maybe more creatively than I do sometimes. I, I just get down to the nuts and bolts of some of this. And I hear no one talking on the nuts and bolts. And I figure that's not, that we're not going to, we're not moving this thing beyond this promotion. I mean, if you listen to our, if you look at our lawsuit, and we talked about sustainable development, and we we identified by their default that it a, was a treason, a war on the United States, and he's supporting it. We and he aids and abets sustainable development through specifically we mentioned climate change in our lawsuit in 2013. This guy is a criminal. This is not my opinion, folks. This is their admission by the de by the rules of that we've agreed as a society to follow when the rules are actually being followed. And we have to insist on that. Why they're not being followed right now, why we see the insanity and the ridiculousness is because we're really allowing it, which that's in us too. That's the other scary part. That's in us, every one of us. Pope Francis, what a man. I don't even know, what to, where do you go with this? Other than it's a lie. The whole thing is based on no objective basis. Even the laws and codes that most people, I, you know, that, that would uh, maybe listen to, to me or those to the extent that would listen and then walk away because they, they want their forms or whatever, they want 
they want the better answers handed to them, uh, would, would uh, poo-poo the uh, law. That's a better objective basis, I can tell you, than what Pope, the Pope Francis just talked about. And now you see that a, Zion, a political movement, the Zionists, will de- interfr- infringe on a religious, in a religious belief system foundation. This guy's that same, that same, this guy's Netanyahu. He utilizes crisis that doesn't exist and there is no test for to hurt people. And I keep saying, I hear crickets on all this stuff. I don't know why it's not even, why I see the mimetic, mimetic uh, the repeat repetition in the social things, uh, why I see people want to replay that out and retweet all that stuff or resend it or finger it or whatever, thumb it or whatever the heck they do, I don't even understand. There's so, so much more clearer and deeper things to be telling people to, to, to know and to start to do if we truly believed in ourselves and were respectful to ourselves, we wouldn't be running what we see. And really, we would all be doing David Icke and, and not be touchable. We would be, as I tell you, you get to this language, you start learning how to use the language a bit. You learn how to tie together what you need to tie together and you don't come into harm's way. You call it something else that everyone understands. You don't give it the names that they have and you start to see the cookie cutter that everyone, the government looks through. That's another example of it. And so, and we can all, the information's here now. Pope Francis is promoting climate change. That promotes a whole other set of stuff we know. We know Agenda 21. It's, no, I, don't, I hope it's not a question. We know the plan goals for 2030. That's not a question. I've told you that's a financial construct. I've told you back in the, what, 2010 or 2015, I can't remember now the years, 2012, the Modernization Act, they went after our food security and all this other stuff. They name all the stuff they're going to come and attack. Uh, today, during the corona, what Greta couldn't do with climate change, what the Pope Francis is now trying to, t- I told you they're, tra- they're tying together. It's the same thing. The coronavirus is climate change. It's, it's the thing they're trying to move the end forward, which was to do what? to live in austerity, to live on a fixed uh, universal income, uh, to be dependent on the system with central authority that's administrative and not law, like Fauci, you see that. You listen to what these people have already for you. They have no authority for it, but you're letting them uh, take it. But uh, what else? The type of food you would eat, the quality of food you would eat. They took away the, the labels for meat, didn't they, right before what? We see this problem now developing. They don't want you to eat meat in this system. And now we get those under attack. Just to mention a few links, just so you can go read it. And you can see this is not just happening now. It becomes now, it takes a little while for people to actually see the importance. And I'm not immune from, from that, that failure. It took, sometimes it takes a little while to say, oh, that was important because of this. In other words, you're tying a foundation of understanding for you. It may take a little while to get some certain things. But here's an attack on your food system through the excuse where there is no test. And uh, this happened, I think, uh, last month. It's been coming. I've been watching the worse and worse and more and more stories about it. But it's predictable as well. It's a war against your food system. Uh, and they have to limit your access to it. And they're really close now to that. But, they re- again, they got to get the slaves to, to buy their own food. They can't feed everybody. They will have the riots. That's the that's the balance point for you all. So as soon as you start realizing that's the balance point and you start indicating it's going to go over, you're going to watch these people back off. They won't back off as far as they need to. You need to push that thing back over the edge. But they will start to back off once they realize the pressure's gone over. Uh, U.S. under pressure to keep slaughterhouses open during virus outbreak. This was back, I don't know, I think it last the middle of March. That was our first indication that they know, the government knows what they got to keep going, but that was also an implied threat that that was what was coming to be controlled. And sure enough, we start to see right now a threat of sick workers of U.S. meat plants forces policy changes on how they were going to deal with this. Remember, your food system is a is a war, an emergency time uh, necessity that's supposed to be protected in law, the interference of which is sabotage. I went through that last week. You can go right to the definitions. It's not the first time I've talked about that either. In fact, I've talked about it in the context of private property. When they come with a code enforcement that interferes with your chickens, that's sabotage under the law. Okay? So you just got to know how to put that together. What's the form for that? There isn't one. It's just, you just you have to go look at the authority for the government to not infringe and then pull out what they're, what the, how the 
how the, they were in excess of their authority. Anyway, these news articles are giving lead up to something. A meat processing plant suspend operations after workers fall ill. So they, their, their, their plans didn't quite work out, and now they're starting to come after the meats. All right? So that's one of the first things that make most people that have looked at this would be looking and realizing, make the connection. Uh, they are, I told you they're going after your food system a couple weeks ago or a week ago. Now we see particularly that the meat is now under threat. Now they're, they're going to claim and they probably will try to keep this thing going, but they're giving a plausible reason why your shelves and your food system is going to be collapsing. Okay, and in where? It's right on the meat, right? It's right where they don't want you to have uh, the global imposition. Notwithstanding what the government said they want to try and keep the meat functioning, that was, to my mind, a telegraphing of what they would be shutting down. Remember, as I think I was talking in the chat, the USDA cut, remember they cut food distribution to, I guess, food banks or whatever, uh, the, the food distribution places. They cut this, what, two years ago, I think it was? And they also cut, I understand they cut the um, food stamps. So I think we read of that. We read that. So that was, tele I said at the time, they're telegraphing, they're telegraphing the, the shortage. Why? I said it a different way, because they also weren't opening up the forests that are burning to clean those up and bringing uh, people work that they wouldn't need to, they wouldn't need the food stamps. So there's a, you can watch a dynamic pretty well if you're looking. Again, you step back and watch the dynamic. How do you address that? There is no form. What's an example? I don't have one because that's not something we've done that way. The example I can, I can explain about how we address the forest fires was to go through the process of understanding the local, how to deal with the local county, the government, working with someone inside the county that, uh, commissioner with a decision, uh, if feeding the information that was required, only that information that was needed, address all the naysayers and all the legalistics that were going to come at us to try and throw that point off, and we eventually got work through to get a policy change and then a plan change for the proper administration of uh, fire law, fire, federal fire policy. Is there a form for that? No. Is there an example? Just that it happened. And like I say, so when you jump in, you'll have to work with that. I have some example, some experience in some of this and how this, what you need to do to try and move around and maneuver, but that's what it takes. There's no form here. We're in a war. You jump in where you think you see an important thing you want to change, and then you work your best rate to, to get that change. You try to pull up more people together as you can. Sometimes it's only a few people. Sometimes it's only a few people that you need. That's all you need, and I, that's what I deal with. We deal with only a few people. I only deal with a few people, and that focused energy that really starts to work really, really well. We could do well uh, as a nation if we started pulling that together th that way. We don't need to be big groups. What we do need to be is a big group if, from the look of the system that we're coming after, a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million different points of, of, of order, if you will, a point of law coming at them, showing them that they're going to be exposed, would be an interesting porcupine look from their point of view, right? Yeah, but meat processor plant suspends operations after workers fall ill. Like they didn't plan this was coming, their policies didn't work. They didn't see this coming, folks. Of course they did. But this is the news. I mean, this is like the biggest news I've, I've seen is about these meat plants closing. And again, it's just a. Um, they're playing out. I still I keep thinking that they're playing out. Uh, this very seems to be working, even though it's not hasn't have the same dynamic. They're playing this thing out the long way like the Spanish flu did, as if their models at the Hopkins, uh, the Hopkins, John Hopkins gangsters, their, their models worked out how they would replicate the problem that the 1918 flu did to the world. When I, so I found it interesting that that, that the Navy guy, uh, what the aircraft carrier was calling for help, <laughs> and then he, that's what, the navy, the navy people were how they, and the army people, we moved around with boats in the in the boats in the World War Two was how they, or no, World War One, I, I think it was anyway, I think it was one, uh, nineteen eighteen would have been one, wouldn't it? Wow, uh, yes. So, were how they moved that around? So to have the have have that big uh, that that aircraft carrier, I think it was, uh, yell, we have sick people on, and then everyone's going, no, 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 there isn't any sick people. It was kind of interesting because that seems like the model. That, that John Hopkins would rerun to replicate what happened in the 1918 without the war. They used n not just the military moving around, but they used, what, air traffic, because it's much faster. 
So anyway, uh, you could just see this playing was play being played out. That's a treason. That's a sabotage. All kinds of nasty stuff, and no one is bringing the points uh, elements together to prove that and pl and forcing and continue persistently putting them forward and getting hopefully getting people to see and jump in on those that you agree with. Again, everyone has their different sentiment about how this works. So this is, a, again, coming down, they're coming after your food, they're coming after the meat. It happens to be what climate change would insist upon. It happens to be what the agenda would be. It happens to be what Pope uh, Francis would uh, uh, completely agrees with. Again, I think it was 2015, I went through three day, three weeks, four weeks uh, to explain this problem and the connecting back up of this uh, religious, political religious condition that's uh, really coming to hurt people. I don't know what else to say. Doing it all by deception. This is the other thing. Deception is not a question. That you're being deceived, I don't even know why that's an issue. Obviously you're being deceived. But it's, So it's learning how they do that and then going after. Once they're deceiving you, then you know they don't have authority. It's self-evident. Again, this is, what, this is so easy to address. I just don't see many people doing it. Well, I do see people getting involved. And, and in a way, rightfully so, you wanted to show how much authority you think you have and all you know. That's important, but I say put that in your back pocket. All you have to do is dress the one or two things that were, were violated by someone who has a, a costume of authority. One or two things is all you're dealing with. with all, you use all the mass of your knowledge of your research and study, good study, not the not got nonsense stuff, but the stuff you can prove for fact that you can get representation for relative to what's recognized inside the myopic view of the government official. That, that's what you speak to. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, what do you use for that? What they use is they use models. Fascinating, cool discussion. I don't necessarily like the political bent of this of this next article, but it does point out things again. The information on the article is not something I'd say here's an authority. The information in the article gives me indications when I look down in the line items of what the failure of these models are. How gives me the thing to go look for that I'm going to point out if I do an administrative addressment against a, uh, some rule that they're making. I utilize the failure because the, you're going to be addressed. The other side uses these models, the BS. The best science is models. And it's also, remember, it's not on hazard. It's on risk management. Totally different. And so they're not even dealing with the hazard. They're dealing with what they, what they can get away with. That's another level of this thing. But the useful or useless COVID-19 models, a response to the armchair analysts. Interesting discussion here on the article. Again, I guess the broadcast could be just looking at one or two articles, a whole, broad, a whole broadcast, and never get to much of the information. To me, it's in a way, it's irrelevant. If you're not going, if you jump in, you'll see what I'm saying. If you don't jump in, needle, needling in on all this stuff is useless anyway. Uh, but here we have a problem in the title. Why, what's the problem with useful versus useless COVID models? Uh, useless versus uh, useful models caught my eye. But what did they do? The, it's like the, right now the cardinal sin in the, the church of the coronavirus here. The cardinal sin is to mention what? COVID-19. Why? Folks, the answer is there is no test. You can't call it anything. In fact, I now realize, I mean, I knew it before, I've said it, COVID-19 without a, without a particular, as an adjective, it means nothing. You have to put the word virus behind that or, or sy sy symptom but to have it mean anything, if a model's going to mean anything. So right, the title of this is what we're dealing with, but it's, it, there is no test for how can a model exist, I guess is the point. This uh, armchair, uh, this uh, rebuttal to an armchair analyst regarding uh, the imposition by people of the validity of models is discussed in this article. Very interesting. It's something I keep telling you about. You need to go through the article and point out how these, what models do. And when you find out in the article what models are and the limitation, in fact, he just, just put it in a, in a nice point. He says it's just a tool. And it may or may not be applicable. And then he explains a little bit why. Is how you attack and start to attack the best science that's brought forward by others that will un invariably bring, bring models. You don't, again, this, this tactic is that you don't put your model up against theirs. You show how their model can't do what the agency is going to rely on. 
When you find out, again, this is back to the, t the point of the decision. How does an official decide on a thing when there's no test for the thing? Literally talking about ghosts. Just apparitions without a test. And this is the foundational principle that you have to focus in on police power, which is being wielded everywhere. Again, I, I want to read, but I don't want to read. We go through this article. He explains the limits of, he explains the stat, statistical uh, teaching about a model. When you understand that thing, you can then turn to any addressing addressing any official or administration relative to that being used, those models being an excuse, which they will. I guess my mind's building to the 5G comment period that's under right now and how you're going to address that. And you can take these so-called model and attach it also to scientific processes, which for the most part don't actually exist for the same reasons. So where you could, where I could, where David Icke compiled two and a half hours of the stuff you found, you listened to over the last few months over a, a behind a woodshed, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying you take the information, you find out what, where the weakness is on the other side, and you go attack that point. That's the pressure point that you punch. There's certain way. There's a certain setup that you do that. The elements of which would be in this article relative to how you you destroy the importance of a, any model, literally any model, and you flip the meaning, the burden of the meaning of what the other side would be supportive of, or using it to support themselves is. You have no more work. All you're there to watch that the answer is correct, that it didn't itself violate things. And in that regard, I thank you to Timothy. Uh, on the Twitter, it sent me a, I heard about this paper, I didn't find it, I didn't look for it. Part of me is not really interested in all this, folks. To me, it's just a thing that they're oppressing us with, and we just need to find the ways to stop it and go go do that. We need people to do that. But uh, here is the someone writing, and I think uh, got, I heard this a couple weeks before on uh, John Rappaport's information. In fact, well, you may have read it if you got the links to a prior broadcaster, a blogcaster, creator of PCR test, the test is not to be used for diagnosis. I think I've actually commented on that. Uh, I, I, the guy who invented this PCR test, this RT that I talked about, he says that it can't be done for a diagnosis. Again, it's it was if you go read the patent, I, I've actually found two more problems with the test itself, with the science that I don't fully understand, but. When you, I heard um, a geneticist explain what goes on, I, have a, I now have a big question whether or not they really know what they're looking at because it's all a presumption what they're looking at even. At any rate, the basics of this is the, the one who invented the test is, that's not a test tells you, also, tells you himself that it can't be used for diagnostics. Now, when you go to the patent, you read they talk about diagnosis, but you re, if you look very carefully... It's just kind of a, an addendum onto some other things that have to happen. Again, you prove there is no test for you. All you have to do is present the fact that the CDC says there's no test, and you know why. And now they have to figure out what they're going to do. You give them one more one chance to, to do the, have the right answer back. And so thank you, Timothy, for giving me this. So you get to see it, folks. I put you a link in the blogcaster. Uh, I, I respond to him. Thanks. Astounding. No, uh, I'm asking Timothy that there's the oh the I'm responding that the inventor himself says don't use this as, to diagnose anything. I say astounding. No, what's what's been done despite there is no test. Sancro sanity. Interesting. Referring in the story, they refer to a needle in the haystack. Given that's how I characterized the condition months ago. Then didn't I, folks? I always find the synchrosanity of these things happening. We all end up identifying. We're looking at the same stinking abyss. We start describing it the similar way. We've never met each other. And so, that's been months and months and months before people now come to synthesize and get 8, 7 million views, and behind the woodshed we get a handful. And thank you for those. How's was that. So, pretty, pretty astounding to me. When you got the, you actually track back and in in create the links in the chain. See, what you're doing now is you're going against the oppressor's uh, facial presumptive claims, and you're finding that there's no links in their chain. There's no links to their proof and title. 
that's how you do it. That's You're doing the reverse side for the other side because when you go to administrative sense, you somewhat have to destroy all that. You find you try to find the very first thing that will destroy most all of it, if not all of it. In this case, for us in the coronavirus, is there is no test. To me, that severs everything that, that might be said after that until they come with something more than an apparition. An apparition, I guess it is. An aberration is what the other thought. I tried to combine two words, I guess, there right there, but failed. So, don't miss the point. Police power requires demonstrable exigence. It has to be something real. There has to be something tangible. And they got nothing, folks. And we're letting them do this to us? Globally, no less. But in the United States, what a disgrace. I don't even know what more to say. I'm just so disappointed at some level. And then we still have questions. What do I do? There's tons to do. We could just, just start doing it. Don't... Don't don't not do something. I mean, become the way the tidal wave of, the, of things. I mean, don't. No one's holding anybody back here either. This is the thing that gets me. It's not like oh, I can't I can't raise my fingers to my keyboard and I can't send an email or something. I can't send a little uh, note over to someone who's not going to listen anyway. But then use that as a as the fact that I gave them notice and they didn't respond. You want to go on the politics side of that? You can go there too. No, you uh, these representatives talk so high and mighty, and yet you look in fact they don't do nothing. Nothing at all. It, what is it? Well, I don't know all the, 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 the liberal terms for it. Uh, yeah, I'll forget it. They come to my mind and go away. They're just useless useless type things. We get buying into them. Anyway, let's go back to the point. There is no test. This needle in the haystack is really the needle. That Now it's not the, the thing that's going to prick us, the pin, the needle in the haystack. It's that it isn't one now. Not because we, oh, we knew that. Oh, it looked like it. Oh, I thought so. No, we now have a problem. The problem is whatever it is has no test. Whatever it is. In other words, you can sit there and say, well, there's something going on, but we just don't know. And just not knowing is not a police power prerogative power. I said power twice. Okay, so understand there's two powers on that. That's that thing, a, 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 an official comes unwarranted without title. If you listen to what I'm saying, it all seems to correlate the same discussion over and over. So then I'll bring John Rappaport's work back up, creating the illusion of pandemic through diagnostic tests. He goes through this some more. He has quotes he's pulled from those documents that you already can get from the past blog past blogcaster or if you went to the CDC or the FDA to find the document. The documents that I relate to, you see exactly what they're talking about. He'll point you to the direction there. That's why I wanted to put uh, put something there. Why am I talking in this regard? Despite all the evidence, no one will do much of anything. I want to continually show you are not helpless. Pull this stuff together. It's Once you understand it, it comes in very short sentences about how you prove, well, there is no test, and more importantly, there is no authority. There is no jurisdiction. There is no no power. Power is what they use. They have none. And if they th if they think they could, you then take the step back and say, yeah, but that's the established government. I still have rights in the posterity that you have no power to interfere with. But they have to answer against the very first thing. What test? Where the CDC and the FDA say there is no test for what you are utilizing as a foundation, what is your power? What is your foundation? There is no test. What's your foundation? It seems like a simple question to me. If you want a form, there it was. An example, there it was. Start with that. Write that down and send it off and then dog someone for the answer. You're not going to get it. Then tell, tell them your next neighbor and tell the next neighbor. There's no test. They didn't answer. Can you ask? Can you help me ask this question? Do you want to get out of your house ever? You need to ask the question. I'll put it on a different, different per, uh, imperative. Oh, was the COVID-19 test meant to detect a virus? It was a title. It was a problem. Was the COVID-19 test? There can't be one. COVID-19 as an adjective to symptoms is just a, a subjective clinical observation. How can those observations be a, a test for a virus? So the title is kind of messed up, but this is not the point of this article. 
This is the point about having the guy who invented the test to tell you that he didn't intend it for diagnostics. And if you diagnosis, and if you look at the patent, they do mention diagnosis, but then you read a little bit farther, just two sentences below, and it has to be coupled with something else, and it's still not definitive. And I say do that so that you know there is no test. And so I'm asking you, when you get there, and maybe you won't go look because you don't want to know there is no test, literally nothing to prove anything exists relative to their claim, you may have to literally go out and do something with that knowledge because they aren't going to throw you, uh, d d diminish that idea in you. There's no way they can strip that to you from you once you see that. All this other stuff now that the guy didn't invent it for the purpose, what he says, uh, an, an addendum to that, is the scientists are doing an awful lot of damage to the world in the name of helping it. I don't mind attacking my, f my own fraternity because I am ashamed of it. As Kerry Mullis, the inventor of the polymerase chain reaction, a PCR test, okay? The guy's disgusted as well. So he calls it out. He starts to name it. He's got his authority about what he does. When you that, So his point is just an underlining of what your quite what your challenge is that there is no test what is the foundation of your actual authority it's a simple question why can't we do that why doesn't anybody do that why do they need to why do we worry so much on the form and examples i've just done it you can do it too and when you hear that it's so that all yeah that's all folks you come with your direct your innate understanding of the failure of what's going on, and you just apply that to Instead of complaining somewhere else, you direct it back immediately. We have to do this immediately. There's another one of these stories. U.S. intelligence agencies started tracking coronavirus outbreak in, G in China as early as November. Remember, I read the article in December. They knew already at the 1st of December it was a bad flu season. How did they identify coronavirus outbreak when no one was talking? And or it's the common cold, folks. How is this even true? This is coming from CNN, so I mean it could be not true. I'm going to ask the question again. It's astounding, no? What's been done despite there is no test? Right? I just put that back in my list. This answers that too. How did the intelligence agency identify the common cold? Why would they be studying that at all? as an outbreak in China. It's ubiquitous, folks. This story has no feet to start with. Once you understand there is no test, and then you look at what they're actually talking about, it's it, it has no place, it doesn't even stand, it has no legs to stand as a statement. Our U.S. intelligence has been studying, is looking around the world for the common cold outbreaks? Are you trying to, what are you trying to do here? Does the administration agree with this? Well, they believe there's something called COVID, they're, they're, they've locked you all down. They're part of the fraud. The intelligence agencies knew this was a bad flu year, folks. There's no part of the administration that can't tell you they knew this was a bad flu year. It wasn't until, what, the end of uh, January, excuse me, the end of December, that China popped up and did their little peep about what they thought they had. And now we bring in, well, is that, was that all a scam too? What, where does the beginning of that thing start relative to, we hear Event 201, the plans that we heard back in 2015, the ongoing repetition since 2003, I think it was, and what John Rappaport has been studying since 1984 on there is no test? I mean, come on, this, is, this isn't even a discussion. How is U.S. intelligence agency tracking coronavirus? Why are they studying this common cold so bad? that it then turns into something? It's astounding, don't you think? And then this article of potential deception, coming from a guy that probably has, is a representative of some, some sort of Neil Ferguson, Neil Fergus Ferguson, uh, he sounds fair enough, but then he brings up this idea relative to questions. And it looks like it's kind of a targeting China as the fault. Again, I'm not so settled on any of this stuff. Why? Because there is no test. We can play up all kinds of scenarios. And you know I have. And you know I've said, let's put these in categories and possibilities to watch out. Because we don't know the other type of needle is the one that is the bioweapon. That is the real thing. This, the needle that we're looking at right now happens to be the one that's sticking us by it because it's a scam. It's a coronavirus bogus. And there's no test to prove it otherwise. 
but this gentleman, Niall Ferguson, made a comment about uh, the six, an article that, that he cites to called the China, China's Three-Body Problem. Interesting little article as well, but be careful on this information. He says uh, there's six questions relative to that article. And he lays out the questions relative to the article that he finds fascinating that need to be answered, and he's anti-China in this. Now, I'm not anti-anything when I have no test. I don't know who the culprits are. I just know who is affecting me, and it's not China. So he asks that the, he points out there's six questions. My response to him, which he does not answer, and when someone doesn't answer me, and I'm not, I want an answer because I'm trying to keep things straight. And if he wants to have an opinion and be a represent, representative of people, he should be a lot more interactive, I feel. The fact of the lack of interaction tells you there's some problem too. So don't don't think I'm too sold into I expect an answer. But when you don't get one, that's also telling of a lot of things. In this case, he asked these questions. They're all focused on exposing China as a liar and a whatever scammer and a bioweapon, all this other thing. To me, it started to read a whole lot like a setup. I like the article I read, but you also notice it has a political bent, a conservative Republican bent to it. It has a nationalistic bent to it on something I know there is no test. And so either we're looking at some real ignorant people or else they're part of promoting the scam. So he asked, they asked like six questions trying to out China. And my observation, just looking at it, what occurred to me when I was looking at it, is what I responded to him in a, in a, in a Twitter isn't the more important question, not six questions to ask of China, but isn't the one question for Americans right now why the CDC didn't check such a demonstrably fraudulent attack but agreed with it and allowed it? The questions propose that the China is using this to attack America. My question is, why, did CDC, why didn't CDC check that it's demonstrably fraudulent Notwithstanding, but I don't say it here, they don't have a test anyway, do they? There is no test to even know. I add on this, doesn't this as equally, because they were talking about the communist, communist one-party system. I asked, doesn't this equally expose the American one-party cockastocratic stratocracy? Doesn't this expose that the two parties are actually one? The worst has risen to the top, and now we're in a military control. Whether or not you want to agree to that, whether you want to diminish it, call it police state. I've told you how you're not, but that's up to you. You can go do the, you can fulfill whatever knowledge you and study you want. I can't stop the limits of that or the extent, and I can't stop improper impositions, uh, as as people might lead along in their best interest either. So. Aren't we show, shown by this the uh, American one-party caucusocracy, essentially, which means that your government's not working for you either? And that kind of answers why the CDC didn't attack the fraud and didn't also say, but we don't have a test. And I say, I think I'm going to continue. I can't find an answer different and better. Had Trump come out in December when they knew it was a bad flu year and announced that and kept pointing that to be the real cause, we would not have seen what we have seen. People would have had a different mindset entered into, and they could have actually shown that China was was making this up. But they didn't. And so the CDC, the administration, the question is not the six questions questioning China, because China's not affecting me directly. My question is for those that do correct, uh, direct, uh, directly affect me. It's in the administration of what's going on. It's in what's going on to support what they claim to be an attack and furthering it. This is no different than what we sued in 2013 when we say you look inside of a state and they have certain laws with leveraged funding. Their funding comes from a bigger a bigger source, Uncle Sam, if you will, and they're, they're the ones that are destroying your local uh, your local property rights through this federal attack. They're letting it happen. Inequity is... Uh, you can you can stop anybody who aids and, and abets that. So why is the CDC doing it when they know there is no test to state what they're doing or looking to see what it really is? 
Now, these are just questions. You can be looking around. If you had them, great. The point is, that's for you to study and hold back that there is, there's no answer, except you realize you're up against people that are, are criminal, essentially. I mean, I don't know what else to say. They're not, these people are not that stupid, people, folks. I mean, I don't know what, you can't, you got to give them some credit for being uh, intelligent. And if you find out they're not, aren't we in the worst trouble? Uh, okay, so I don't know what more to say on this point. I'm going to be moving just a little bit again with what they want out of it. What they want out of it, if the, if the EPA is one of the pillars of Agenda 21, the environmental pillar, and climate change sits there as that, that one of the weapons. And coronavirus is an environmental thing, and as is biodiversity treaties, which included uh, what, um, uh, gene editing, gene, gene technology. And what they're after is uh, further another weapon is to uh, keep tabs on all this chaos that they've invented that you keep agreeing to that doesn't exist. There is no test, folks. I don't know. The, I can't help. I just want to keep saying that. But I realize as I say it, it diminishes the the power in what I'm saying uh, ultimately versus what they're, the other side's supposed to be presenting. But truly, there is no test to invoke all of this in y'all, upon you all, and no peep is really scary. But another element of this, which the Pope agrees to, and anybody that's in the WHO, and anybody that's in the Gates Foundation, and Fauci's, and now the, the, the administration, and the CDC, they all agree to this, is now coming out to let us know uh, that it's not a joke, that they we talk about track and trace, now continuing in this continuum, as you, proves to you that you haven't stopped it, and you're not stopping it yet at all, and I say they're going to do it through this, this telephone stuff, and other Internet of Things, Apple and Google will enable your phone to track COVID and you. What's the problem with that title? There is no test, folks. They can't track something there's no test for. You could believe there's something. They could believe they're tracking for it. What are they actually tracking? Are they tracking COVID or are they tracking you? Just when you're wondering why the world's, tech business, world's biggest tech companies weren't doing to fight the coronavirus, or why the world's tech companies weren't, weren't fighting the, the, the weren't fighting the corona pandemic, folks. There's no test. There's no coronavirus. That's why they're not fighting it. They're focused on what their end result is going to be for them. Apple and Google made a big announcement. They are joining forces to build an opt-in contact tracing tool using Bluetooth technology that could help public health officials track the spread of COVID-19, the disease. It's not a virus, folks. It's a disease. It's a set of symptoms right there caused by the novel coronavirus. It is caused? No, that was a presumption. You see that even in China. In fact, China said early on there's no human-to-human -human transmission. And the CDC didn't, didn't catch that either, folks, if you didn't know the, the, the jig is up on this for you, unless you stand up. Caused by the novel coronavirus. How do they know that, folks? There is no test. Uh, do you understand how fast you can cut through this nonsense? And then that should tell you, well, if, I, if there is no test, maybe I'm locked in my house for no good reason. And then I'm telling you, there could be no good reason to lock you in your house. We're two or three steps away from even getting to that. But if I can get people to see there is no test, therefore there is no authority to keep you in your house, you at least can get a, yourself and a bunch of other people to say there is no test and then focus on those, those that are making the imposition, whether that's the police that can kill you or the uh, governor or the uh, mayor or whoever uh, claims to have this authority. As I pointed out, even the judges believe in the imposition, and they do through their membership of the Bar Association with the imposition of sustainable development, which means austerity for you, universal payment. You think that $1,200 is, folks? What do you think that's, a, that's the start of? The limitation of the food. You're not going to get meat. I, I won't be surprised if nothing, or something burger, whatever, nothing burger, whatever the hell, I can't believe it's butter burger, whatever the hell that is, if they don't get some kind of a government contract to supply all these uh, food, uh, food places now. Novel coronavirus. How do they know? There is no test. The new tool, now this is the contact tracing. Contact tracing. What we talked about, we talked about the warrantless uh, acquisition that we were complaining about years ago, a couple years ago relative to the FBI and the, and the cops using this so-called contact tracing through your GPS. Now they're going to get you to download an app so that you 
you opt in, and this is the, tr the, the joke, I tell you, they get you in slow and simple. They're drug dealers, folks. They, they get you in with a sample, and then they, they hook you, right? The new tool brings with it not only hope, hope and change, hope and change for a quicker end to the pandemic, which is you locked down and tracked and traced because there is no pandemic. I challenge anybody to produce the proof to you know, make my words via, uh, invalid. Uh, but as a host of privacy and security, but also a host of privacy and security concerns. It can't be a host of privacy and sec security concerns when you've opted in or downloaded it and put it on your devices or it incorporates itself in the next update, Alexa. The contact tracing tool Apple and Google want to create, want to create? would have your smartphone log when you've come into close contact with other people. If one of those people later reports COVID-19 symptoms to a public work health authority, your phone would send you an alert. That's a little, a little guy about three and a half feet tall with a club. Uh, it works. It's an alert. A new, new creature, they've, Chimera, they developed. I work. It works as a bit of like an exchanging contact information with everyone you meet, except everything is designed to be anonymous and automatic. <laughs> Not anonymous and automatic. You don't even know what's going on. Instead of, of a contact info, your smartphone will periodically exchange anonymizing tracing keys with uh, nearby devices. That's to keep you from knowing, but they do know. Let me just get to the crux of this. Pretty soon, the next update will include this, whether or not you uh, download it or, or opt up. And uh, my understanding is since you don't have root control, you cannot stop what it, they end up doing. They have control. Was there, was there a Twilight Zone or something? They had control of your TV? Well, this, they have control of your phone. Anyway, that's the crux of this. And again, I could read and read. It's all in here, folks. They're, your phones are going to be programmed to be a tracking and tracing tool, like I told you. The news told us it would be like they needed, like the technocratic tool they said they needed to monitor to, for data acquisition, for their modeling, for all their kinds of things. This becomes the leash that you're on. That phone becomes a connection. If you don't think the next program will update to an Internet of Things plugged into your house, is not going to be able to do this too and start communicating with other devices to be able to find you in the place and track you every second. I don't know what's in your mind. I don't know what your, how you could miss this one. And it's all coming in a, in a state and condition where there is no test to prove the foundation for the need. They're blowing right through any question of warrants when they claim that they could do it without a warrant and they do it by private company. I told you folks, long and years ago, public-private partnerships are going to be the death of you. And maybe literally now here. This is what I, we also identified in 2013 for sure. Is what, the lawsuit was the culmination of an understanding, I guess, is the other point for me. It wasn't questions at that point. They're pulling the culmination, the outcome that they want has been happening this whole time. They've got it. You keep uh, silent weapons for quiet wars, for those of you that have read a little bit about through that. This is the evidence that it's happening. It's done public and private partnership. Don't underestimate. I've said it. I say it only a few times. I'll say it one more time again. The Bar Association, if you look at your government, is a public, private, a public and private agency of your state. If you didn't think this has already been going on, and that happened back around 1953. So they've got this place wired, and you haven't figured it out. I mean, I was just thinking, at some point, I can't be wrong. There's nothing I can be wrong about here. Nothing. I, I don't even know. And I'm not saying that because, listen to me, I'm not. I'm right. I'm saying, once you get a look at this, it's, that's what knowledge is. A detail here, a detail there. And I notice I've been, as I listen to my critique my own broadcast, I've been misspeaking here and there a little bit more than I used to. So... The end is nigh here, I guess, for me, folks. <laughs> but it's not so much. The overall comprehensive discussion I have here is one from a knowledge. It's not, oh, I know that. There is another thing that has to be done 
when you know that, and that's why I'm here talking to you. It doesn't end when my broadcast goes off. I've got to, I do other things to keep moving things along as best as I can. There's not a big enough error I've made in telling you things that I shouldn't, I mean, at some point I just heard, that I shouldn't have 7 million people tuning in. And my problem a little bit about that is not that they tune into me. Anybody who could say what I say and present when I present it, I'd love it. But look how many months now have been delayed to people that got the information in a nice little two and a half hour package. And then they still didn't get the documentation to prove it, that they could go use it as a, as a remedy for themselves en masse. is a real problem to me. For you all, essentially. Because this thing has been coming down the pike. Well, our, our head's been going down that pike. I'm going to put it back on a, I'm going to shove it back up on a pole in the current middle, middle ages in the, in the middle of the square for everybody here soon. Uh, that the public private partnership is the weapon of choice by the technocrats. And they require data acquisition. So are you, again, you could complain and you could say, what do I do? Or you can just start jumping in and, and even if you jumped around and find mistakes and this and that, if you did it in a way that didn't cause jeopardy, you'll start honing in on what you're like a, you'll be like a, a heat seeking missile. I can just tell you that if you get in there correctly. And if you take what I'm offering, apply just the basics, as I'm saying, you'll learn that a lot quicker. And then you'll, you are not going to be wasting your time complaining. You really won't. I'm not saying there's an answer. What I'm saying is that you're setting up a record that others objectively see. It's not an opinion then. The CDC says there's no test. The FDA agrees. I don't know. I got two witnesses, folks. I don't know what else more I need, actually. How is a governor, how is a mayor, how is anybody shut down your life? Now they're stealing your meat all over a what, folks? A COVID what? We don't even tell you if it's a symptom or a virus. There is no, there's no test. You, you sneezed. Okay, that's a symptom. I guess, oh, now you have COVID. Does it mean anything? And I'm going to remind you all, you all, this is allergy season coming on. This might be a little bit of a tough one, too. So all these things come intermingled. These people are brilliant how they pull this off and when they do it. But, okay, so here comes your connection. They're going to make it mandatory. You won't even know it. You get your next update. You don't even know it's working. They just do it. Why? Because they've somehow peeled themselves away from any governmental liability. They're a private company and you do business with them. So any of you programmers out there that want to make an OS that you can take these computers, figure out a way. I don't understand why you just can't burn the firmware into them uh, to change this. But I guess you can't. I don't know. Like they call it rooting. I don't know why you got to do go through that. Just I don't know why you just can't change the firmware over the whole chip. Those of you that are coders, we're going to need technology that keeps this thing completely separate. And in an integrated way, so like, I guess, open source, and over that's not a protection, in order to keep this nonsense from going where they have planned it to go, and you continue to, to plug yourself in under the excuse that you, you don't know what to do. I, I guess the, uh, that's the one thought that did uh, come to me. I mentioned a little bit last week, if your house was on fire, you'd know what to do. What you don't understand is that this is your house on fire. You don't perceive it as your house on fire, so you don't know, you believe you don't know what to do. You don't understand the invisible destruction that's going on. Now, maybe like termites. These people are like termites. They're in your walls. Now, you can disregard the crunching you hear in the walls, or you can take an interest and say, I better go look at that. For as terrifying as that might become, for as terrifying as the damage might be when you get there, you still pull the first panel off to look inside. Nobody's doing even that on a societal level. And your house is being eaten away from the inside. You, again, if you heard a noise, you'd probably go look. Or are you too scared of monsters? The scary monsters they tell you are there, but there is no test. Grimner, my house is on fire. This is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there a little, uh, just a little guy sitting in the in a kitchen, little little memification of that? Everything's great. Or oh, the the airplane uh, memification, nothing to see here. Okay, so this is the point. Your house is being uh, eaten or burning, is not a joke. And it's you look around you, you don't see the house on fire. I'm telling you, your house is on fire, and this is how they're doing it. The invisible invasion is what's going on. 
and they've got it very well set up. And that, well, I see a society that buckled so quickly is astonishing. Uh, just, I don't know what to say. I don't have really more to, I'm just aghast at some level. And so, okay, so that's what you hear today, that they're pointing this thing the direction that they've told that it's coming in laws and things we talked about years ago in, in systems that have been set up for decades and decades. And uh, But w- together today, I want to always, like I did last week, bring on, given we have a thing that's out there, a bad flu season, and there's a certain characteristic that pops up in a percentage, a small percentage of the population, you need to know about that in case you know someone who's like that in that percentage, that small percentage or not. It could mean their life or for yourself. And so something comes up, and I told you last week of some things. Consider these things that you direct what you want done, or was it two weeks ago? You direct the care that you want and don't accept just what they give you based on some protocols. I have a link uh, for uh, on, a, on, a head, on a website here. It says New York MD says he's seeing people suffering from something that resembles high-altitude sickness, not pneumonia. Ventilators possibly harming them. That I think those of you that want to be more interested in what you could af- affect you, you need to look at what he's saying. Ultimately, he doesn't say that the ventilators need to be replaced where you're in this condition. He says they need to be, they need to be treating you in a different protocol than for pneumonia. What I find interesting, if it's not pneumonia, that's one of the symptoms they say COVID is. We've also heard this failure, so we have another problem here. But if you're one of these people, and you're not seeing that they say that when they put the ventilator on with the normal dogma protocol, they actually find that people get worse. You don't want to be in that condition. You want to be able to tell people, what, uh, uh, tell medical people, you see the limits of authority and license here as well. You need to be able to have a thought in your brain or a thought for someone who's not capable to at least offer the suggestion. And I could just say, well, I better not. I'll just give this part, this much. I heard of a problem. It was an ulcer. I said some research I had years and years ago said that's a bacteria, I think it was. And the, I advanced that to someone uh, to tell the doctor. The doctor was unaware of it. They treated it for that ba- uh, treatment for the bacteria, and they cured the condition of of ulcer. So you have to be available to certain um, conditions and be aware and open to being, take responsibility for your care because the care industry, the treatment industry may not understand. This doctor is important to understand that he's saying it's not necessarily pneumonia, a small percentage of people who are diagnosed with the boogie virus, the covid it's not. This is not even a symptom now of the COVID, yet that's what they're being brought in, that it looks more like a high-altitude sickness. That brings on a whole other potential causation. Potential. Now, I'm not going to go and do the surmise because that's not really what we can do as I move this thing along. As they also want a vaccine to solve and treat you, I wanted to read this from Secret Beijing. Now the COVID-19's genetic mutations are so well adapted to survive in humans that it spreads more vigorously and has a mortality rate of over 20 times than flu. Uh, European countries should ab- abandon the methodology of herd immunity as it is not feasible and the costs are too great. First of all, I would agree with the, looking at the mutations. The rest of this, I wouldn't. These coronaviruses mutate like crazy. I want to remind you, given this is the point, and this is an authority that says that, forget all the rest. If it has great genetic mutations, you can't make, it proves you can't do a vaccine. The very thing that these people that want to harm you are trying to do for their track and tracing, contact tracing, uh, corona, uh, I mean, the virus uh, implants that they do, or the uh, dye injection we talked and reported about. Now, uh, real quickly here, jump, and I'm going to not have enough time to really go through this like I want to. I have a lot of links I don't have to discuss. If you're interested, you'll do this. Gary Long sent this a while back in the Twitter. It says, here it is. Please gain standing by making a written comment or lose your ability to take a relevant judicial action in the future regarding a federal register notice. For those of you that are into 5G and think you know a whole lot, I am asking you to step up with all you know. And you're going to have to, this, you'll be coming to the test now on what you really know, which I'll be, if I, you'll find out the knowledge is not sufficient. You just have to learn a little bit more on how you're going to apply it. Human exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic fields is uh, now a list. You'll get the link. You can go read it yourself. For those of you that are against 5G, 
uh, anything about uh, these electromagnetic fields, you need to step up, not with your complaint, with what you know, not with what you think you know, with the evidence and how you address the problem. The um, precautionary principle is not your friend in this, even though it works on the EPA side. It's not your friend in this rel relative to the FCC. They don't care that they hurt you. Their bottom line is the bottom line. What you have to do is learn the administrative requirements, the, st the cookie cutter of that cuts that they use to cut their their decisions out and you need to find certain things that you can relate to not to come necessarily as the authority but I think at this time to show that the decisions they're made have not they say taken a, a hard enough look at things that you present as the things that are evidence that they're not agreeing with that could show either adverse effect or more importantly cumulative effects. Now if we go through NEPA that would be to mankind and mankind's environment not the natural environment. And so I got a bunch of links here not to prove anything. You have to make this very clear understanding of what you're there before the agency to do. Go listen, go read the reg register notice. You'll see what they tell you they want. You bring what they want and you bring it in a way. One of the ways you destroy the evidence, uh, the, their, their cookie cutter, their rubber stamp is to find the requirements that are on them to do certain things that the rubber stamp would not meet. I have a, a link to uh, IARC, another World Health Organization document that brings up and classifies radio frequency electro electromagnetic fields as possible carcinogenic to humans. You can't rely on that. They'll disregard that. What you do is you read inside of this, see how they came to that, and you bring out those, and you look and see whatever the um, concurrence of proposition is for it, you find that within the proposition, it didn't make regard for those things in the study that they did find a possible carcinogenic. There's another study of human sweat acts, uh, sweat ducts acts as antennas. It's not enough that it acts in a sweat ducts. You have to say that this was beyond a thermal reaction. It's actual physical. you got to say that wasn't looked at. The cumulative effects have not or could not be determined without a harder look, if you will. Don't stick on these words just as generality. Scientific Research of 5G, 4G, Small Cells, Wireless Radiation and Health Environmental Health Trust wrote that. They look at that. They have a whole list of information. You're not looking for this as proof. You don't like cite this and cite that. You find out what the failures are within that that could lead to an oversight where they have a requirement to look at certain things if it's safety that they look at and you bring that forward. I've talked about this before as I remember I told you how to do this before but I'm going to bring it now because Gary brings up that it's time to go make your comments folks. It's time for those of you that have actual evidence or can show how what the standard they're using has not and cannot be met with these other at least even anecdotal references from authorities. Now the authority that you're talking to means something. There's a, a couple more I'll throw in as I um, look now uh, that you can look at. Um, they also touch the 5G and coronavirus. And with that, there's no causation. Don't go there. Don't go there. Do something else. Coronavirus doesn't exist. It's a common cold. You're going down the wrong path. That was handed to you to, to, to make you, uh, allow you to defeat yourself. Don't do that to yourself. Thank you, Grimmer, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And Jules over at ucy.tv and uh, Sound Minds and Normalization of Ignorance and whoever else is out there and all the minds and bit shoot and everybody who's uh, favoriting and thought. It's all that. Thank you very much. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. That's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.